All right, we're going to continue up section 1-4 today. So here's a real world example for using um, Extrema, talking about Extrema for types of problems called optimization. So this is a fuel economy problem. Advertisements for a new car claim that a tank of gas will take a driver and three passengers about 360 miles. After researching on the internet, you find the function for miles per tank of gas for the car is f of x, and you can see the equation given there, where x is the speed in miles per hour. What speed optimizes the distance the car can travel on a tank of gas? How far will the car travel at that optimum speed? Well, if you think about optimizing your um, your speed and optimizing your miles per gallon, then you know that you want to find the best miles per gallon that you could get. So first of all, take a look at your function and, and you should know what the shape of this graph is going to look like just from looking at it. So think about it for a minute. You know it's x squared, you know it has a negative coefficient, so you should be thinking about a parabola that opens down. Now I typed it into my function or into my equation for my calculator and did zoom 6. So we'll take a look at the graph. Well, as you can see, zoom 6 is not going to work for this. We need to figure out what our viewing window should be. So I'm going to use my calculator to help me out with a viewing window. And what I did was I'm setting up my table set. And don't worry about the start or delta table. Set it up for ask and auto. Then I'm going to go to my table. And I'm going to type in the least amount my speed could be. Well, zero. If I type in a zero, I know that my graph has to start at 240. It's going to be my y-intercept. So now I'm going to type in what I think is an, you know, some reasonable speeds. And I'm going to type in as a maximum speed 80. Not that I would ever go 80 miles an hour, and you shouldn't either. So we can see what values we're looking at. And I'm going to use that to kind of adjust my window. So when I go to my window, I'm going to let x go from 0 to 80. And I'm not going to count by 1s because I don't want a whole bunch of little lines there. I'll count by 10s. And we'll go from, oh, I'll go from 200 to 400. And I'm going to count by 50s, ah, 25s. And now I hit graph. OK. Um, so I can kind of see, again, what I'm looking for is my optimum speed. Now, apparently, I could in extend this a little farther. So let me go ahead and extend it to 120. I want to see what happens here. All right. So we want to look for our um, our optimum speed in miles per hour. So I want to take a look at what this maximum value is. So second calc max, which is number four. And this time I'm not going to type in a number for my left bound. I'm just going to use my arrows for a left bound. And you know I'm kind of on the left side of the max there, so I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to use my right arrow and just scroll over a little bit. You want to make sure you get at least get past where that little hump in the middle is. And now just go left arrow to make sure you're somewhere in between. And you can see that our maximum, if we wanted to maximize our gas, then that looks like we would want to be going 70 miles per hour. And take a look at what the y value is, because the y value was going to tell us um, our number of miles that we could drive. So it would be 363, approximately, miles. I want to put a little disclaimer on this, though. If the speed limit is 55 miles an hour and you get a ticket, then the cost, the extra cost of the ticket is going to outweigh your savings in gas mileage. So I recommend sticking to the speed limit. We're going to talk about average rate of change now. 
And as we see up here, the average rate of change between any two points on the graph of f is the slope of the line through those two points. So you'll see two points on my graph or on my function f of x. And if we wanted to know the average rate of change between those two um, values, then we just find the slope between those two points. In geometry, the line through two points on a curve is called a secant line. The slope of the secant line, we use an M for slope with a little subscript of SEC for secant. The average rate of change on the interval from X sub 1 to X sub 2, the two points on the, on the curve, um, is just given by the slope formula. So this, and you can think of it as Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Again, the, the y values are just the function heights for those particular values of x. So for this example, we're finding the average rate of change on the interval from negative 3 to negative 1. So what we're going to do to find, to find that is just the slope. We want to find the slope of the secant line. So we're going to evaluate f of negative 1 minus f of negative 3, those are the those are the y values, over negative 1 minus negative 3. So I'm just using those values. I'm going to plug those values into the function. So when I substitute a negative 1 into the function, we get negative 2 times negative 1 quantity squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 6. Remember when you square a negative, you get 1 times 2 is negative 2. This would be minus 4 plus 6, so I get 0. When I substitute in a negative 3, I get negative 2 times negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 plus 6. So we have, this is going to be a positive 9 times negative 2 is negative 18 plus a negative 12, plus 6. So we get um, negative 24. Over um, 1 minus negative 3, this is going to change to adding the opposite. So we end up with a 2. So I have 24 over 2, which is 12. So my average rate of change is 12. All right, so for the next one, find the average rate of change for this problem. Again, to find the slope, we're going to take f of 5 minus f of 2 and divide by 5 minus 2. This time, however, I'm going to have my calculator do the work. So I typed in my function. Then I'm going to go to, oh, I have this on here. Hold on just a second. Okay, so if we go second table, actually I, I still have my table set to ask an auto. And now I can type in a 5 and type in a 2. So I'm letting my calculator do that work for me. So going on here, we get f of 5 was negative 24, f of 2 is 6, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So we get negative 30 over 3 which is negative 10, and that's my average rate of change on the interval from 2 to 5. Now think about that. This is a slope. So what that tells me, if I look at my function, which let me go ahead and do that. I'll zoom 6 on this one. And you'll see from, from 2 to 5. So if I look when x equals 2 to x equals 5, my average rate of change is negative 10. Notice also that my function if I were to draw um, a line to represent this, notice that it's decreasing, so it's going down, so it would be a negative slope. The secant line, if I were to connect between 2 and 5 and connect, um, the, draw the secant line, I would end up with um, a negative slope. Go ahead, pause the video, and try this problem. See if you can come up with the average rate of change. Okay, you should have gotten negative 19 on this. 
Okay, here is a real world example. Um, the formula for the distance traveled by falling objects on the moon is d of t equals 2.7 t squared, where d of t is the distance in feet and t is the time in seconds. Find and interpret the average speed of the object for the time interval of one to two seconds. So to find the average speed, we're going to substitute the values in. So we're really looking for the slope of the secant line. So we're going to evaluate d of 2 minus d of 1 over 2 minus 1. So we end up with, when we substitute a 2 in, we're going to get 4 times 2.7. And I have to switch this back here. So we have 2.7 times 4. 10.8, and we're going to, we don't need to use a calculator for that next part. So we have 10.8 minus, we plug in a 1, so we just get 2.7 over 1. So we have 8.1 over 1, so I can just leave it as 8.1. Now notice that this is distance, so distance was in feet, and the denominator was time, and because one to two seconds, so this was in seconds, so my answer is going to be feet per second. And when it talks about um, finding and interpreting, you just need to make sure that you include your units on that. So my average speed for the object between one and two seconds, the average speed was approximately 8.1 feet per second. Now we've got the same situation, except now we're looking for the average speed between um, for the time interval two to three seconds. So again, we're going to use, I'm going to use d of three minus d of two over three minus two. So we're going to substitute in a three, so we'll have 2.7. So we'll have 2.7 times 3 squared is 9, and I already knew the other one from plugging in the 2. I still have it on there. So we end up with 24.3 minus 10.8 over, must be time to stop, my pen's not working, and we get for an answer. Apparently, I'm having technical difficulties here. All right, so I ended up getting 13.5. So we have 13.5 feet per feet, feet per second. You can go ahead and try this one and um, see what you get for an answer. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, when you do this problem. You should have gotten a negative 24 feet per second, but we're talking about speed. And when you calculated that using a physics formula, you're actually calculating velocity when you look at your change in distance over your change in time. And velocity has direction. So sometimes you get positive, sometimes you get negative. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So when you're asked for a speed, the direction doesn't matter, so the answer would be 24 